Hello, little dragons. Welcome to lesson 1.4, Reflections. Now, if you're wondering what a reflection is, I gave you a little hint right here. You see that? See what I did? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got you. Anyway, we're going to be talking about geometric reflections, which are a little bit different. So what is a geometric reflection? A reflection is a transformation in which a geometric figure is flipped over a line. And I can't tell you how important this fact is creating a mirror image. So these are our two key points right here. You reflect over a line and you get a mirror image. So let's look at our example right here. We have our pre-image, ABC. This is our pre-image. All right. And it reflects over line P to give us our image A prime, B prime, C prime. And if you look here, look at these two. These are mirror images of each other. And not to mention there was a line that it reflected over. So those are our key two, key two points. You reflect over a line, always over a line, and the results, your image is a mirror image. So you'll see our important pack right here. To reflect an object, you must have a line of reflection to reflect over. And in this case, what was our line of refraction? This was line P. All right, you must always have a line of reflection to reflect over, or you can't do a reflection. You'll see how important that is in the lesson. Okay, so first we're going to start with a reflection over the x-axis. How do we do it? First, we're going to reflect line AB over the x-axis, and we're going to state the coordinates of the pre-image and the image of AB. Now, to do this, there's actually a rule. Whenever you reflect over the x-axis, what you do is you take the coordinate, let's call it coordinate xy, and you change the sign of y, so you get a x negative y. So what that negative means right there, that means change the sign that says sing, the sign of y. All right, so if it's positive, it becomes negative. If it becomes negative, it becomes positive. So we're going to reflect this over the x-axis. Now point A, our pre-image, that's at negative 6, 3. So let's write that down. It's always good to state our coordinates. And B is at 5, 6. All right. Now the rule for reflection over the x-axis is just that we change the sign of y. So I'm going to write down the rule here. It's a good habit. Just write it down on that arrow. And so what we're going to do is the x stays the same. Okay. So it stays the same. But our y changes sign. So it goes from positive 3 to negative 3. Same thing happens here. Our x stays the same. It stays 5 but our y changes to a negative, all right? So you change the sign. So now let's do graph our image. So it's at negative 6, negative 3, which is right here. So that's a prime. And then we have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6. And that's our b prime right here. All right. And we do that. And look at that. It is the mirror image over our line of reflection, the x-axis. Beautifully done, guys. So remember, this rule will help you do all your x-axis reflections. Now let's move on to a reflection over the y-axis. Okay? We want to reflect triangle CAT, yes, I love cats, over the line, over the y-axis. Okay? State the coordinates of the pre-image and the image of CAT. So now we have a rule for reflecting over the y-axis. And the way you do this is, let's see, you have a coordinate x, y. You take your x value and you change the sign. So change the sign of x. Change sign. Almost put sing again of x. All right. And the y stays the same. Y stays the same. Okay. So let's give this a shot. Well, our image, our pre-image, well, let's see, c is at negative 8, 3. A is at negative 5, 8, and T is at negative 2, 3. All right, so our rule for reflection is negative X, Y. It's just a good habit to write down the rule. And let's do this. So you'll see here, it's negative. Our rule is change the value of, it. change the sign of X, keep the Y. So if X is negative 8, that becomes positive 8 and our y stays positive. 
If this is negative 5, that becomes positive 5. And if this is negative 2, we're going to change the sign, and that becomes positive 2, 3. So if we reflect this over the y-axis, we get 8, 3. So 8, 3 is here. That is C prime. A prime is 5, 8, 5, 8. That's A prime. And then we have T at 2, 3. And that is T prime. And look at that. Oop. Let's draw that again. And that is our image. So you see C reflects over, comes over here, T reflects over here, and A reflects over there. And that is our image. Man, we're rock and rolling. So uh, my suggestion is memorize these two rules. Reflection over the X axis gives you X negative Y. Reflection over the Y axis gives you negative, y, negative X Y. Let's keep moving. So in this case, we're not going to reflect anything. They did the reflection for us. We want to describe the transformation that maps ABC onto XYZ. All right? And just something you should know. You might remember this from the last lesson. A should map onto X because they're both the first, right? So A should map onto X, point A. Point B should map onto Y. So B maps onto Y. And C maps onto Z. All right? So what would do that? What would map these points onto each other? Well, the first thing you should do to do this is figure out your line of reflection. Where is our line of reflection that reflects over? Well, if you look, it seems to be reflecting over this line right here, which we call, what do we call that line? This is the y-axis, all right? So to describe this transformation, what we would say is this. This is a reflection over the y-axis maps triangle ABC onto triangle XYZ, all right? And so you can use this template. A reflection, always state the line of reflection. You always state how, what line you reflected over, and that maps ABC onto XYZ. I'm, I'm going to say this again. You always must have a line of reflection. Always must have line of reflection. All right? You can't do a reflection without the line that it reflects over. The second part of this question is, is this a rigid transformation? Explain your answer. Well, you should know by now that, yes, this is a rigid transformation. A rigid transformation because it preserves the distance between points. It preserves because preserves distance between points. All right? Get in the habit of saying that. It preserves the distance between the points. So the distance from A to B is the same as X to Y. That distance between each of the points is preserved. All right? Let's try a little bit of a harder one. After a transformation of A, B, after transformation, A prime, B prime is the image of AB. That's a line, right? If A is 3, 5, B is negative 2, 4, A is 3, negative 5, and B is negative 2, negative 4, what transformation will map AB onto A prime, B prime? All right? So the first thing we should do is probably draw out these coordinates. So let's look at it, okay? So A is 3, 5. Let's go down to that. 3, 5. All right? And B is negative 2, 4. All right, so that's A and that's B. Okay? Beautiful. Hopefully you could draw a little straighter. You should probably have a ruler. Next part is A prime is 3, negative 5. So that's our A, oh, that's our A prime. And B is negative 2, negative 4. That's our B prime. All right? Now, if you look at these two, where does it look like our line of reflection is? That's the first thing we're going to figure out. Where is our line of reflection? And it looks like it's reflecting over this line right here, which we call the x-axis, right? This is our x-axis. So to describe this transformation that maps AB, line AB, onto A prime, B prime, this would be a reflection. And don't forget, we always put our line of reflection over the x-axis would map line AB onto A prime, B prime. And is this a rigid transformation? 
Yes, and just copy what you see above, okay? It's the same exact question. This is a rigid transformation because reflections preserve the distance between points. Man. All right, so now for the second part of this lesson, we're going to be doing reflections, but without the coordinate plane. So there's no coordinate plane, but we're still going to be doing reflections, all right? First, we're going to start with this guy. We're going to describe a transformation that would map pentagon A, B, C, D, E onto pentagon F, J, I, H, G. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why don't they just translate it, all right? This is a lesson about reflections. Why don't they just translate it? Well, if I, tra if I translated it, then what would happen is I'd have B map onto G, all right? That would be a translation. If I ma transformed, if I took this whole pentagon and I translated it over, B would move onto G. Now, the problem here is, I want you to look at this, B has to map onto J. So what I'm going to use here is a reflection, all right? I'm going to be smart about it. So this is going to be a reflection. Now, first thing I always have to do is figure out the line of reflection, all right? And my line of reflection is right here, all right? X, Y. That is our line of reflection. Line of reflection is X, Y. To describe my transformation now, that would map this pentagon A, B, C, D, E onto pentagon F, G, H, F, J, I, H, G. Well, this is going to be, and I'm just going to use the template from before, a reflection. You state the transformation over the line x, y, because I always write my line of reflection. And that maps pentagon A, B, C, D, E onto pentagon F, J, I, H, G. All right. Let's give this one more try. Oh, sorry, two more tries. Sorry, I got you all excited. Two more. We're going to describe a transformation that maps triangle ABC onto triangle DBC. All right, so we know A maps onto D, B maps onto B, and C maps onto C. All right, how are we going to do that? Well, once again, we're going to probably use a reflection. And what we're going to need is our line of reflection to start off with. And to map this triangle, a, B, C, onto the triangle below it, right here. I'm just going to reflect it over this line in the middle. All right. So hold on. Let's get all that, get that out of it. I'm just going to use the line B, C. If I reflect over this line, they'll map onto each other, right? So my line of reflection is B, C. Now the template's not here anymore, but I'm still going to use it. So to map these triangles onto each other, it's going to be a reflection the transformation over line BC, because I always state my line of reflection, will map triangle ABC onto triangle DBC. You can see I just used the template from before, but now I just don't have to fill in the words. It's just totally blank. All right, let's do this last one. We are going to describe a series of two transformations that would map triangle LFT onto triangle YZX. So there's two that I need, right? Because if I just reflected it, well, that wouldn't be enough. I need to do two things. First, I got to shift it down, and then I got to reflect it. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to do a translation to start with. We're going to translate along a line. And the line that we're going to choose here is TX, right? And once again, if you're wondering why TX, you could choose any two points. I just want to get these lined up. T on 2X. All right, so let's go. Let's, let's translate along that line. So we're going to take our triangle, and we're going to move it along TX. Boom, translated it. Look at that, all right? So that was step one. Now step two, get that line out. Oh, and let's write that down. So first, a translation. And remember, I always say the line that I go along, along line TX. And then, because I'm not done, I'm going to reflect it, right? But I need my line of reflection. If you look here, I'm going to reflect over this line. And this line is XZ. So then a reflection over line XZ would map triangle 
LFT onto triangle YZX. All right, I had to do two, but it wasn't so bad. First, I just had to translate it and then reflect it. And if I reflect it now, come on, come on. Help me out here, kid. If I reflect it, they map on top of each other. Boom. Give that lesson to the books because we done. Nice job. Kiss your mama. You did it.